Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Vinay. I'm the Managing Director uh, at Vishko India. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, so this is the, the first session in our RE Views uh, series. Uh, and uh, what we are aiming to do here is uh, really throw a spotlight on some of the latest trends uh, in the industry and have a more insightful uh, discussion than is typically possible uh, in a typical webinar uh, uh, of the uh, the Indian renewable energy industry, of course, is a very, very vibrant uh, place. Uh, there are lots and lots of uh, things moving around, the technologies, policies, business models, uh, and financing. Uh, you know, we want to discuss uh, the model technology uh, landscape today, uh, which is going through a, an absolutely fantastic pace of change. Uh, we are seeing uh, new, more efficient modules, technologies coming to the market. Uh, we were initially, uh, you know, the module technology was pretty stagnant. The space was stagnant until about 2018. And then we saw multi-crystalline moving up into monocrystalline slowly. Bifacial modules came in. Uh, and then since then, the pace of change has actually really just quickened. Uh, and now we see many more new uh, technologies in terms of N-type technologies. IBC, Topcon, HJT coming over the years. Uh, we also see larger wafer sizes, cell sizes, and, and modules. Uh, we see new uh, cell technologies in terms of cell connection, uh, you know, half cut cells, one third cut cells, and so on. Uh, so, really, it is really quite an uh, astounding array uh, of choice uh, out there. Uh, the other uh, interesting trend that we see in the market is that. Uh, some of the larger suppliers uh, are just getting bigger and bigger. Uh, they are investing very furiously uh, into uh, R&D uh, and, and uh, capacity expansion. Uh, if I just give you some of the numbers, uh, I have some of the numbers here uh, for uh, Longi. Uh, and just uh, uh, five years ago, uh, their wafer capacity was uh, seven gigawatts. Uh, cell capacity was three gigawatts and module capacity was four gigawatts. Uh, and I believe, if I'm not wrong, that uh, they will end this year uh, with a wafer capacity of 105 gigawatts. So that's a staggering 15 fold increase in capacity uh, in just five years. And similarly, they will have a cell and a module capacity of 38 uh, and 68, 65 gigawatts. So, so there is uh, lots and lots of change around uh, in the module. Degree in the module market. Uh, obviously, the implications for the, for the investors and the users are uh, as technology becomes more efficient, uh, you need less land, uh, you need uh, the BOS costs come down, the LCOE comes down, power becomes cheaper, and hopefully the sector grows faster as a result of that. But there is also, of course, a flip side uh, to all this change as we have seen uh, in the last uh, six to 12 months. Uh, supply chain issues have propped up. Uh, prices have become more volatile, and uh, the developers are complaining that actually they're not able to get shipments on time, uh, and contracts are being renegotiated as, as well. So there is lots of things uh, moving around. Uh, we want to discuss in this session. Uh, uh, Sangeeta, if you can move on the slide, please. So the agenda uh, for the discussion today is. We want to discuss the various technologies which are coming to the market, uh, larger format modules, uh, impact on project development in terms of design, BOS, and LCOE uh, for projects. Uh, what are the cost and availability issues uh, on the, in the module market? Certification, and then finally, the pricing outlook. Uh, we have two uh, very eminent uh, panelists uh, in the session today uh, who are uh, arguably better qualified than anybody else. We have Chris Liu, who is the technical head at Longi, one of the leading module suppliers, not just internationally, but also in India. Uh, and then we have uh, Vijay Kumar Shimpi, uh, who is the chief procurement officer uh, at Tata Power, uh, which of course is uh, one of the leading IPPs uh, and APC contractors uh, in the Indian market. So welcome Chris and welcome Vijay uh, to this session. Uh, we have uh, about an hour uh, uh, of discussion ahead of us. We will take some Q&A uh, towards the end. So please, if you have any questions, uh, do enter those questions uh, in uh, on your uh, dashboard and we will pick up those uh, towards the end.
So uh, with that, uh, I will uh, open uh, the discussion and I will start with you, Chris. Uh, and really, my first question is, uh, the pace of change uh, in module technology just seems to be getting faster and faster. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want to understand from you uh, what is driving that change uh, and what can we expect uh, over the next, let's say, three to five years uh, in terms of new technologies uh, and then, you know, following on from that, what are the benefits for, for potential investors and developers? Hmm. Hello, Vinay. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Chris from Longi Solar. And I'm very honored to be here today to uh, share my point of view on the technologies. And here, and I wish everyone is uh, uh, doing great and uh, stay safe uh, in India. So um, when we talk about the uh, technology, you know, we talk because uh, my background is R&D of sales uh, for the first 10 years of my career life in uh, PV industry. So we talk about technologies all the time. But now, actually, what what is uh, driving the the technology changing? Actually, it is the cost, not only cost of the technology, but the, the cost the LCOE cost is uh, changing the whole industry. Like we we can see, like 20, ten or twenty years ago, the the LCOE of solar is like ten times of uh, traditional power, but now we can compete it uh, in a very uh, good way. So we can see what happened in the last five five years in solar. We saw Diamond Wire saw uh, uh, cutting technology to reduce the wafer cost, the, the mono wafer cost. Then we see uh, the perk, the perk technology and the bifacial perk technology. I think this is the mainstream of the uh, product uh, in solar now. And then what happened is the uh, cell size and the module size changing happened. Uh, before we have uh, 156, then we have 166, then we have uh, uh, 182. Then we make bigger modules to get a higher power uh, for each more each module. Also to reduce the boss cost, to reduce the labor cost, to uh, reduce the uh, support system cost. So uh, everything uh, happens based on the cost down. But uh, we also see that the uh, cell technology uh, development, you, you you feel like it stopped since perk. So we just to make bigger modules to get big uh, to get higher power, but the risk uh, will be there when the modules is becoming bigger. You will have a, a mechanical loading uh, risk, um, which will happen in your field. Maybe not right now, but maybe in next two years or three years, you have a uh, storm you, which you cannot predict now. So what is the next uh, step of the uh, PV industry of the uh, module technology? So we think it will be N-type. So talk, talk, uh, talking about N-type, I'm also very excited that I have had five years uh, research and development experience on N-type. So I'm also very happy to see that from the, I think from last year, uh, we saw a lot of uh, new investment in China is on N-Type. I think uh, mainly focus on uh, Topcon and HJT. Um, some from uh, new players, so, some are from the new players and some are from the, uh, I think, the, uh, uh, which is uh, already a very big players. We. So I think there will be over 10 gigawatts and type investment uh, we can see from the uh, market. And from Longji, actually, uh, five, four years ago when I joined Longji, Longji, we already have N type technology. Uh, at that time, we uh, sold N type wafer to uh, Europe, to uh, South Korea. 
uh, to those uh, overseas, uh, to China's overseas uh, module makers. Uh, and that time we also have N-type cells at our uh, lab. But by that time, um, to commercialize the product is much crucial to the company comparing to improve the efficiency. Because by that time, um, we have uh, uh, poly modules on the market. And uh, I think Mono is not mature enough by that time. So uh, N-Type have a very uh, good advantage of its high power, uh, which can gain, uh, I think, 30 or 40, gig, uh, 40 watts on each module, yeah, comparing to poly. Because uh, by that time, there's a uh, uh, perk is not uh, ready. Uh, and we can see that the N-type modules are very popular for the European company, as well as the US company on their uh, residential rooftop. The technology, to be honest, by that time, is already mature enough to commercialize. But the price. Uh, it should be uh, double or even uh, higher comparing to the poly modules. So I think the the um, how to say the, the 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 task for Longji is not to only to develop uh, an untyped technology, but an untyped technology uh, has lower cost. Yeah, Antap is not new. It, it it was there 30 years ago. But how to reduce its cost is is the it's the uh, I think the a major problem to not only to Longji but to the whole industry. So in the last three years, uh, our uh, development team um, uh, keep working on this project and reduce the uh, cost not only by ourselves as well as our uh, equipment suppliers and also the material uh, suppliers. Now we have our untyped module uh, to the market. Uh, the mass production should be uh, from the beginning of next year. And uh, so far what I get is that the sale efficiency will be 1% higher comparing to PERC, comparing to mono PERC. And uh, the module level output on uh, M10 wafer on, uh, means uh, 182 uh, wafers. The module power will be 20 watt higher comparing to PERC modules. Yeah, this is what I can uh, share now. So we will not, uh, as, I think as the uh, same, uh, as the same uh, what we did on the uh, module design, the, uh, we will uh, continuously to use 182 uh, millimeter wafer, uh, bifacial, half cut, and smart soldering, uh, which can reduce the uh, micro crack uh, in the wafers. I think the, the module type is the same and the power will be uh, 20 watts higher. And I think um, we can uh, soon see uh, to see the market changing uh, from uh, P-type perk to untyped top com in the near future. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so I have got two immediate questions uh, following on from that. Uh, one, of course, you know, we saw the shift from multi uh, to mono, almost like a 100% shift uh, in a span of about two to three years in India, and of course in other markets before that. Do you expect a similar shift will take place from P-type to N-type over, I don't know, however many years uh, uh, in future? Do you, one, do you expect to see that change? Uh, and second, you know, again, from my understanding, N-type is not one technology. Uh, there are many forms of N-type in terms of IBC, Topcon, HJT, etc. And within that itself, is there going to be more evolution uh, in various intact technologies over time? And which technology might win ultimately? 
uh, I think uh, for the uh, technology shifting from P to N is not going to be like uh, PERC, uh, mono to, uh, poly to PERC. So okay. it will start from the region which uh, the capex is not that sensitive. Right. right. Because uh, at this moment, uh, there is still a price gap between N-type wafer and the P type wafer. And we okay. will still have a price gap between more uh, N type module to uh, P type mono. So in short terms, um, this gap will not be eliminated. Okay. And uh, I think this is also a good topic. I think we will start to do this with our customer very soon to see what's the expectation uh also i think we can uh ask require our customers to uh co-develop to see the future of n-type i think this is okay. not from us just, we just try to do our best to reduce the cost but we also need to uh get benefits not for only for longji but for our customers mm -hmm. yes. and uh, Yes, uh, and for the second question about different type of an N type, uh, to be honest, uh, this is also about the uh, initial investment of uh, sale suppliers. So, like for uh, Topcon, uh, which have the uh, less less uh, investment capex to upgrade. The, uh, to upgrade the equipment, so to up, uh, you can upgrade the uh, production line from P to N. You need to buy um, extra two or uh, three extra uh, device or equipment to upgrade your existing line. Uh, I think uh, in short term that the top con will be the best choice for most of the customers because uh, there is no uh, cost pressure uh, both on the suppliers and the customers. And uh, for HJT, uh, I think it's from the technology, it, it's uh, uh, a little bit better than Topcon, especially in India where the environment temperature is much higher. Uh, but uh, the risk for HJT at this moment is its initial capex will be much higher, will be much higher than uh, uh, Topcom. And uh, even uh, for HJT, there will be different uh, technology routes to get there. So, um, so far, we cannot see any successful uh, case, we cannot see any uh, successful case on the market for this uh, product. So I think after Topcom, maybe two or three years later, we can we can see a JT. And okay. also for IBC, IBC, I think this is a, another story. It has a like double process or even as I remember, it's like uh, 15 uh, process steps for the sales. Comparing to PERC, it's only seven. So that means the whole sale design uh, will be changed and the contact, the fingers will be on the backside of the module. And uh, we can accept, expect the uh, price also m much, much higher than any other technologies. So if there is IBC, I think it will only on rooftop, not uh, right. for the ground, not for utility project. So IBC is, I think IBC is, is always there. You, you know, the US company, they made IBC for so many years, but I think it's only for the rooftop. Right. Okay, so you mentioned uh, that the Topcon module made by Longji has 1% extra efficiency and 20 watts uh, extra output. 
how does that compare vis-a-vis -vis the price? I think I think you were trying to suggest that uh, price uh, uh, effectiveness may still not be there for some more time. Uh, I think Longji is. Uh, we we think our uh, advantage is not only the cell technology, but we also have the uh, wafer technology. So right. as a vertical company who has uh, good experience with uh, N type, I think this is our uh, pros for uh, the N type. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Vijay, I, I'll come over to you. Uh, how do you, uh, what do you make of all these changes in the technology landscape and the vast array of choices you have? Uh, is it really as large as it seems or, uh, you know, from a, let's say from an LCOE point of view, which is probably your ultimate uh, driver, uh, you know, ultimately there are only one or two choices as you see uh, viable today. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Vineji. Uh, good afternoon, Chris, and good afternoon, uh, I mean, audiences who are there on the call. I hope you are all safe and fine with this current uh, second wave, which is tapering off. Yeah. So uh, coming back to uh, your question, uh, yes, LCO is the, uh, the most important thing for a developer's perspective or EPC perspective, for for that matter, any perspective. Having okay. said that. Uh, uh, whether uh, current Indian market or Indian prices uh, which are there, which is going on prevailing PPA prices are uh, receptive to this technology and the prices which is being driven now in the market, that is a question. Having said that, uh, currently I think market has more or less uh, saturated or, or shifted to monopark. Having, having said that, uh, when we shifted to monopark or trying to shift to monopark, uh, the prices also shifted uh, towards, uh, I mean, north side, northwards uh, from uh, Chinese market. So both things happened uh, simultaneously, and somehow that is not uh, helping either parties. Of course, it, be, it might be helping the model suppliers to increase their uh, top line or bottom line, but as a developer, it doesn't help uh, really in the current situation of uh, price points. So what come what comes to us is how do you effectively use available model technologies? Really, I mean, there is no not much choice currently. That is N-type and Chris told N-type and P-type. P-type is prevalent, N-type is still evolving. And uh, significantly, of course, uh, N-type is widely used in Gulf, uh, I mean, uh, Gulf countries. But in India, I think uh, we have to, to use it. Still, I think there is a price point gap between the two. So having said that, uh, currently, yes, we're using, I mean, uh, P-type mono models relevantly, I mean, relevantly and dominantly. And that's how it is. Now, coming back to bifacial, uh, bifacial, again, uh, widely we are not used so far. We have done a couple of pilot uh, projects with bifacial. But yes, I think in the times to come, uh, I was just had a question in the mind when Chris was talking. What could be the benefit between N-type bifacial and P-type bifacial? That was, I was just had a question. How long, how it gives, uh, uh, it will give benefit to, uh, I mean, in terms of generation, in terms of, uh, I mean, LCOE. You have idea? Chris? Uh, yes, uh, for N-type, I think the uh, advantage for bifacial is that uh, the bifaciality of N-type will be 10% higher than P-type. So for P-type, we have bifaciality like four, uh, sorry, uh, 70 plus minus 5%. But for N-type, we will have 80% plus five, uh, plus minus 5%, uh, plus, uh, plus minus, yeah, 5%. So that means the uh, uh, back set, uh, backside gain of the bifacial of N-type will be uh, more than 10% higher comparing to p-type by facial okay thank and you. we also and we also offered a lower uh, degradation the degradation will be lower than p-type by facial because there is uh, no lid which caused by the boron oxygen pair so for n-type we don't have boron anymore in the wafers 
So the first year of degradation will be lower than 1%. Yeah. So I think uh, we have to try and we have to see vis a vis what's the uh, what's price of uh, P type uh, monofacial and P type bifacial and vis a vis uh, P type monofacial and N type monofacial. So we have to <coughs> do the costing of that and we can do one or two pilots for N type bifacial from technology perspective. You see, we are just by becoming a model bigger, doesn't help. You know, just bigger is not better. That is, that's what I feel. If if the bigger is there, it should be efficient also. Otherwise, if it yeah. just it's only more area, and uh, the efficiency is not increasing, so that may not really help from uh, PC or total cost of uh, implementation of project, or I mean total cost of ownership for the developer or for the, for that matter, PC player also. I think I hope I answered the uh, your question. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, so, Chris, if I could just ask you, you know, when you are talking, uh, Longji is talking to the Indian market, the, the various developers today, or you, I'm sure you have various contracts already in their execution. What is the bulk of, where is the bulk of the demand coming from? Is it all uh, P type mono, monofacial modules, or are you you're seeing a lot of uptake for bifacial modules? And what is the mix between monofacial and bifacial modules? Uh I think so far what uh, I get to know is that the last year we have less than 10% of demand is bifacial. So Thanks. I think most of them will be monofacial. And I think this year uh, the ratio will be around 15 or a little bit higher. Right. Yes, this is for uh, yeah. uh, what, what I see from the market, yeah. And, and I, I've always wondered why is that the case? Why are bifacial modules not gaining more acceptance? And our understanding was that the price difference between bifacial and monofacials has come down less than a cent. Uh, and uh, at least in spaces like Rajasthan, etc., you know, hopefully with higher albedo, uh, there should be a, a LCOE benefit for bifacial modules. Is there, can you comment on that? Yeah, yes. Uh, we also have analysis on the LCOE, and uh, what we get is the bifacial LCOE should be lower than uh, monofacial. But when we come to the capex, uh, I think so far the capex for bifacial uh, power station is still higher than uh, monofacial. Because okay. when the, the the module size is a little higher, like uh, I think half a cent. Uh, also, it requires uh, more land yeah. because we have a, a we, I think albedo in India is not bad, but uh, we want to have a a large pitch for bifacial. Right. In comparing to P type, so we need more land, and that means more cable. So I think uh, for capex, uh, the P type is still have the advantages. Mm -hmm. Vijay, would you agree with that? Uh, what is your? Yeah, the bifacial. Uh, I agree that bifacial delta between monofacial and bifacial is uh, decreased now. As you said, less than half. So he said half cent around so. Uh, right. So that is actually uh, that is there. So with that with that change, uh, I I presume uh, at where the sites where the albedo is uh, better. Uh, so I mean, developers will go for that. We also tr trying to a couple of sites uh, with uh, bifacial modules, of course, we type currently. So that would help. And of course, if you use tracker, then it will be add-on thing. So you get better generation. And what type of tracker you choose? So, bifacial with tracker would will be the good combination. Even normal bifacial also with higher albedo uh, factor at sites would also help. But somehow recently the commodity is also not helping us. The structure still structure prices also gone up. So overall again uh, the I mean the construction cost, structure cost, structure is one of the major contributors in boss. Bio balance of system. Right. So that, that also becoming a factor. 
so yes we have to see that combination and and, and the model and and, the, and see how much uh, benefit we get and at what right point of time we have to put which which you have to use which technology module but as you said uh, n type we have to watch uh, wait and watch how the technology is getting uh, generalized and become run of mill technology like monopark what is the difference between uh, chris uh, n type and p type bifacial models uh, or even mono monofacial models as per you now uh i think uh so far we don't have plan to do monofacial for n type because you know i just mentioned that the bifaciality of n type is very good and the the cell structure is bifacial from the very beginning so th this always a very uh, good advantage for n type but we also see that the india market need monofacial so we are also trying to convince the company that we need monofacial n type for india market but to be yes, honest what, i really want to I, I yeah. really want to work with Indian customer to see um, which combination is the best uh, for Indian market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I have a question for Vijay because you just mentioned you have several pilot projects for bifacial. Um, do you have any uh, concerns about the bifacial uh, according to your experience? not not as such not as such no concerns as such but so, of course so we have not done very big project i mean we have done pilots only so that is that is one data is limited but uh, what i understand from the market and industry entire middle east works on bifacial so i don't think that should be concern for anyone for that matter i think the cost is the king so currently in india so which is not only not in our control so, and, and either uh, uh, you guys are helping our chinese friends are helping us on the cost to reduce the cost so these both factors i think are decision makers uh, for choosing either module or technology currently right so that is the problem but yes i think there is no issue to answer your question there is no there is, i don't think there is a concern whatever we have done by it so far okay yeah okay. Uh, Thanks, thanks, Vijay. Thanks, Chris. Just uh, switching to uh, the upstream value chain. You know, we saw over the last few months, uh, you know, all of last year, glass was a major problem uh, in China. Uh, and then, you know, policy weekend also, there have been a spate of uh, incidents, you know, flooding, fires, accidents, etc. Because of which policy weekend prices had shot up, glass prices were very high, but then, of course, they came down. Uh, is that very much uh, related to how the technology is moving. I mean, are these upstream shortages uh, and supply chain constraints uh, a direct result of changes in the downstream technology? And are, is that likely to continue uh, going forward? Uh, you mean the supply of the uh, supply chain? So That's I right, think yes. for poly, I think poly is uh we, we don't see many players also we, we cannot see many players uh for the poly raw materials so from this year we can still see 20 gigawatt shortage of poly so i uh you you know in the last three months the poly price like tripled uh than before and we also uh, have some sales suppliers uh, wanted to sue the uh, poly uh, suppliers because they are changing their price by week basis. So it, before it's on a monthly basis, they will update their price, but uh, this year they update their prices by week. So we can see like every week, we can see a um, more than five percent uh, higher than last week. Uh, so I think the module side, the module price also have to uh, change uh, to a higher level. 
So I think this pressure is already uh, to the uh, downstream. I think all the uh, customers uh, know what happened uh, to the whole supply chain. Mm. I think just like uh, what happened to the glass, last year we have the same issue for glass. Uh, I think everyone is uh, short of glass. Then And then we have new players in very soon. Some uh, glass suppliers, uh, I think, which are not in the solar business. They are maybe in a car business. And they are uh, changing to do solar uh, to do the solar glasses. So we can see that the glass price, uh, I think, is becoming uh, to a reasonable level, um, I think, in this season. So uh, what I can expect for the poly uh, will be similar, but not same. This year, we still have a shortage of poly. So I think maybe the price uh, increase will be uh, slowed down. But uh, I think the market is still there because of the shortage, the price will not drop very fast. And, uh, uh, and also for Poly, we also uh, see some new players, but they are not switching, uh, not, not like glass business, they just change from car to uh, uh, solar, it's easy, but for poly, it's not an easy way. In because in the last twenty years, we only have uh, ten to fifteen players in poly. So I think this change uh, is happening, but not that fast, not that easy. So uh, I don't think the uh, price of uh, poly material will uh, shrink that fast. Okay, but do you see any other uh, constraints in the upstream uh, value chain, uh, part of the value chain uh, going forward? Or do you think once, let's say, polysilicon's uh, supply stabilizes, do you see a continuing trend of other uh, constraints and shortages going forward? Or do you think it is just temporary and, you know, after, let's say, six months or 12 months, things will stabilize? Oh, uh, I'm I'm not sure about this, but I heard that the back sheet price is increasing these days because of the PVDF, uh, uh, the raw material of PVDF now is uh, required by other industry like uh, uh, Li-ion li batteries. I mean, other when other uh, uh, when other industry need uh, PVDF, then uh, I think the price is increasing because of other industry. But I'm uh, sorry, I'm not uh, I'm not very sure about this. So, so, all right, thanks, Chris. Uh, Vijay, I mean, you obviously very categorically mentioned that uh, prices have been going up, and that is of course a major. Uh, you know, uh, challenge for you uh, as a contractor in IPP. But what about uh, the supplies itself in terms of the reliability of timeliness, uh, assured, you know, assured uh, supply, etc.? I mean, do you see any problems on that front as well as a consumer? See, uh, <clears throat> whenever, uh, I mean, uh, you said about timely delivery of uh, modules, or, or even the or, contractual integrity uh, of the process. See, the uh, there is, uh, I mean, uh, we when we work with our Chinese friends uh, in particular, we always uh, make uh, try to make watertight contracts so that you know they honor uh, the contractual commitments, they honor the quality of material supplied, quality of bomb, whatever I mean they mentioned in the BI standard all the measures of putting inspection in place, uh, all, all things are there uh, in the contract. And uh, most of the companies honor to the point of time, but when it comes to price, then it's become a dicey game. I mean, so in India, all our prices are fixed price contracts. 
uh, with our uh, former whether meant the PPA or uh, for that matter EPC with government yeah. company or private companies. India is not used to have flexible contracts uh, structure, right? Uh, price variation structure like we do in EMA. I mean electrical sourcing where we have EMA or other formula based things. Somehow uh, we sign uh, contracts with fixed price and finally land up in paying uh, more price most of the time uh, in the recent past which we have seen and of course the contracts uh, are not uh, uh, you know honored the way they should have they are written because there might be some genuine or non genuine reasons at chinese end of course the pandemic is one of the most uh, favorite reason currently for anything uh, happening in life including the contracts right so so there is a issue there is a issue this issue is relevant that contracts are uh, sometimes not honored by suppliers hmm. of course there, there can be any reasons but for us uh, we have one side fixed uh, contract where the other they are not changing or the other side uh, <laughs> we have a challenge and so sure, that, sure. Is, that is a that is a bone of contention between us and our suppliers that is there whether or not agree but they try to follow most of the time but sometimes yes it is not it is a it is a problem delivery is not honored or price is not honored that happens that happens recently it is more because i think the volatility is more that's the problem so earlier i think it was not a case earlier i mean maybe i'm telling you one or two years before i mean two years before one year last year last year it was the lot of issues we had so i hope the thing stabilizes uh, things will stabilize i mean everything should stabilize so that is my input to to you on this on your question so thank you so chris i mean you you heard what vijay had to say uh, i know personally you know speaking to various developers that uh, price volatility and renegotiation of prices has been a major major uh, problem for many developers uh going forward you know of course we understand that you know glass prices went up uh metal prices and commodity prices went up polysilicon uh, shortages were there but going forward can you give us an indication is there any kind of can you kind of pricing outlook uh that you can give us uh you know given the various uh supply side uh factors uh, are prices expected to stabilize are they expected to maybe go down a little bit from where we are today over the next year or so uh i think uh for this year the glass price is uh uh coming down quite a lot but at the same time the poly uh price increased i think uh, last webinar we had i i think the the price uh i expect is uh coming up a little bit um today i think um to my opinion, I think the price is will be stable uh, for the second half of this year. And uh, for next year, we may see uh, the new player of Poly uh, will be ready. And by that time, I think the pressure on the price uh, will be lower. Yeah, yeah. I also wanted to ask you uh, two questions, really. Uh, one is, uh, what is happening? Why the technology is improving, efficiency is improving, etc. Uh, what about other factors? I think you mentioned degradation is coming down. But what is happening to the warranty support that you're offering on these new technologies? Are you able to offer better reliability and better warranty support uh, on new technologies? And also, uh, combined with that, uh, what is happening to all the old technologies? I mean, with people who bought, uh, you know, multi-modules five years ago, uh, if they have any warranty claims, is there any way that they can go back to their previous suppliers uh, and get, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, how do they deal with those warranty claims, given the, given the fact that nobody is making those modules anymore, given the technology is changing so fast? Uh, I think, for the new technologies like N-Type, because of the output 
on each module is higher. So uh, the, the bomb sets uh, cost on what basis will be lower. So when the efficiency is higher, the bomb costs uh, com comparing to uh, the lower power output, the, the cost will be lower. I think this is the a good part of uh, untype. Uh, because it it can uh, on what on what basis it use less poly use less glasses. I think this is the advantage, and uh, for the uh, warranty, because of the uh, advantage of N type materials, that the degradation will be lower. Um, when we talk about the uh, claims for poly, I think most of the company is not uh, producing poly anymore. I think the, the big players. So um, what uh, I think what we can do now is to replace the module with a uh, perk with the current technology. And also this is not all, uh, only about the uh, poly, because I don't think we have, even for some uh, players still have poly, I don't think they have the same uh, pattern of the module. And uh, you have to apply this. I think this is a, a, a future topic. I think everyone will uh, facing it because after two years or after four years, the old type modules uh, will be phased out. This will happen in every company. Right. And we will not uh, keep this product and uh, pay the, uh, pay the uh, cost for BIS to continue the product. So right. I think uh, replacement with similar size of module or a higher power module uh, to uh, replace the old type. I think this will happen. Okay. Uh, Vijay, do you want to comment on that? I mean, uh, have you in your experience, how are you dealing with warranty claims and uh, is there any challenge you're facing in terms of trying to uh, get new modules to replace some of the older uh, modules? Yeah, uh, I may share. I would like to share our experience. We have hundred odd uh, locations in our entire India, uh, spread over India, and then we have uh, with our, uh, I mean, uh, takeover of Elspun, We had uh, their plants and their technology. Their different plants are in our kitty. Having said that, uh, we have uh, multiple experiences of model performances, and then we have found a couple of two three companies at least wound out when we. Even for warranty, I mean warranty claim, and uh, see, it's 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 not easy to claim uh, warranty from uh, solar uh, model manufacturer. I mean, though I'm also a manufacturer, right? So, but uh, because somehow I'm, I, we are wearing all the hats of uh, supply, so solar entire supply chain from manufacturing to EPC to developer. But it's not easy. I mean, they have they have multiple rooms, and they have one side warranty clauses are there. Uh, by model manufacturer, so it is difficult to get a warranty claim that is there. So okay. it's not but easy. My question, it's not easy. Uh, no, sure. So I think you were addressing the kind of legal uh, aspects or the financial aspects. No, I'm not addressing the legal aspects. See, if if my suppose uh, I have I have one, two three projects, the backsheet failure was there. So okay. so now uh, that failure attributable to what? Then supplier was saying, okay, I don't want to name the suppliers here. Not a blame game or thing discussion here, but experience sharing discussion. So they will have 10 points that you're not done this, you're not done this properly, you're not a direction, you're not typing properly. I mean, they will have reasons uh, to say no, and then it's difficult to get it uh, implemented. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a work by itself then uh, to get warranty implementation. So, so the Important thing is your partner should be reliable, your contract should be good, and your EPC should be good. 
okay say they say like you know the the ions and i mean the b2c market or b2b market in india as for that matter so people go for cheaper model and then uh, the model has to last and generate for 25 years it's not a today's thing so and the supply should be there to support you after 20, till 25 years both things are there so there are ways you get take, take the third party insurance or whatever i mean to, to bind them contractually for the bankruptcy or whatever but yes uh, we have uh, we have used multiple model suppliers and it is it is a task by itself to get uh, warranty implemented from the manufacturers that is and how, sure. big, and how big a problem is that vijay i mean in terms of you know given your experience over four five thousand megawatts of execution how big that is that problem really in practice and how do you deal with that going forward no we had one or two sites uh, one or two sites uh, some, uh, we had a problem not many uh, not many one or okay. two okay so say, some particular lot of our plots i mean size not 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 much touch wood so far not much because we while we selecting models uh, we do all due diligence we we do all checks uh, technical checks and then and then we will we'll follow the complete process for the entire supply chain including inspection and third party inspection so generally the problem should not be that i mean but of course uh, when uh, whatever we took over the project there we we had two three problems at two three sites so it's not easy uh, journey is not easy to purchase uh, anything is easy in solar industry like module inverters and then when it comes to performance disputes then it is uh, is difficult i mean we have to be very particular about uh, our contracts and contractual obligation between purchaser and seller that's my experience on that okay uh, i i don't know chris if you want to comment on that but you know i also wanted to ask you uh, you know we have uh, increasingly stringent uh, certification requirements in india uh, first of course there was the bis now it is lmm as well and uh, you know we still get more than 80% of our requirements from imports but none of the international suppliers are approved as yet uh how is is that and what how big a problem is that particularly given that you know you are uh, constantly investing in new technologies and the technology landscape is changing and you hope to bring new products to the market how you know how do you deal with the problem like bis lnm etc i i think uh i thought it was a big problem that we have to um launch the product in india like six months later than any other countries um right. it's complicated that we made uh samples to india to test the modules uh with different combination of bombs it really takes time and uh, to be honest all also money uh you, you know time and money but now i think i think it's not not bad because when the new technology coming out you for mass production so normally we need three months uh to stable the to ramp up so i think when our india customer get this uh, new technology or new product it's quite stable now so i, I don't think it's a bad thing to india market now right yeah and, and like one year ago i i i really hate it because it really takes time yeah. and and one time you sent one one uh, bomb set modules to uh to the lab and uh, do the test then you have only one bomb set but you have so many indian customers the the and also the the demand is huge then our pressure is on our supply chain that we only have one supplier on each bomb but we have gigawatt uh, demand. Th this is complicated. When your demand is huge, only we can count only on one supplier. I mean, I mean the, uh, the 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 material supplier. Then they might will raise the price. 
but now uh, it's better than that we can uh, send uh, multiple modules with uh, maybe one bomb set uh, but cover two glass or three glass uh, three uh, back sheet or more so I think uh, from this year it, it's, it's quite good now and also I think mm -hmm. BIS uh, set up a threshold for the module suppliers. You you have to uh, qualify your supplier, your your material suppliers. You have you have full confidence for your product. Um, I think unlike several years ago, some players use very cheap material to. Uh, Indian projects just because of the uh, low low price. I think that's not good for the Indian market and not good for the supply themselves. So um, BIS, yeah, it always uh, take us like six six months, and recently it's even longer uh, because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So no, normally we have one month for the registration, but now we need to wait two or three or even longer. Okay. But I think after, you, after this, it will be better. Okay. I think after the pandemic, it's good. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. And do you have a timeline for ALM certification? Uh, for AAM, I think Longji uh, submit all the documents first. It is, I think it's all almost uh, one year ago. But because okay. of the factory inspection cannot be done in China right now, right. Uh, I think it stopped. Yeah, but, but as a supplier, we are uh, fully ready for this. So, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Vijay, I mean, given some of these challenges, particularly ALM coming up as well, uh, and of course there is this uncertainty about duties uh, after July, uh, are you uh, beginning to uh, prefer India-made modules uh, in comparison to imported modules? Is that, uh, how is that featuring into your uh, decision-making process? See, uh, <clears throat> as you know, uh, as we all know that, of course, China is uh, having 80% capacity of solar modules manufacturing. India is, uh, I think, uh, around uh, maybe fourth or fifth uh, in terms of manufacturing of modules, right? So we, we, may, we have around 15 gigawatts, uh, at least template capacity in India for manufacturing modules. So uh, having said that, uh, the, the competitiveness of Indian suppliers uh, is against the pricing against China. I mean, Chinese suppliers in case of utility markets is not, uh, I mean, happening whether we like it or not. I mean, but that's 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 it is. China is more cost competitive in, in, in today. So, yes, currently for utility market, uh, utility projects, our preference, I mean, is natural reference or natural partners comes is, uh, of course, uh, China, Chinese uh, models. But yes, for domestic segments of uh, rooftop and other area, like we have commissioned uh, four, four, four fifty watt model first time in first time in recently three months back. The Indian Genius model factory sale, Monopark. So we were first in India at that point of time. So with that coming in, uh, I mean, uh, will be pretty, definitely it will be good if we use Indian models that's there. But we have to become uh, competitive. We have to have the scale as an Indian manufacturer and uh, get competitive and we should have entire value chain which is not there today so just by putting model plan manufacturing plan won't help us you know how to have cell manufacturing as well right. so to answer your question precisely yes it is for utility we don't have choice we have to use uh, the most competitive market it can be chinese or whatever source it is there sure. sources are not many or three four maximum china vietnam malaysia thailand all asian countries right so we'll use available source. Of course, there's one more uh, technology that first solar technology, thin flame. So that is also choices there if it is cost competitive. Yeah, that is there. All right, thank you. 
So, you know, we're just uh, almost out of time. Uh, I'll just take a few questions. If Chris and Vijay, both of you are okay with that. Uh, the first question I have here is about uh, the NTAC technology requiring more silver paste. And of course, silver prices have been going up as well. Uh, and how does that uh, affect the rollout of NTAC technology? I mean, does that delay it because of an increasing cost disadvantage? Uh, I think for HJT especially need a silver paste like double uh, or uh, I think like double or triple uh, of uh, P-type. But uh, I think recently the uh, multi-bus bar technology, because we, we don't have a bus bar anymore, uh, which can reduce the uh, silver cost consumption for HJT. And for Topcon, it will be the same. Topcon, I think it's similar to uh, P-type. Uh, HJT, it will be reduced, but the, the silver paste technology for HJT is uh, totally different from P-type and from uh, uh, N-type Topcon. It's a called a low temperature, uh, te uh, low temperature uh, silver paste. Uh, you 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 don't need to fire at the temperature uh, like 800, but it's dried uh, under like 20, uh, 200 uh, temperature degree. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's different, but I think okay. the uh, cost is reduced due to the introduction of uh, multi bus bar. Right. Okay. Uh, the next question uh, is for you, Vijay. Uh, there's somebody who's keen to understand uh, what is the LCOA difference between mono and bifacial models today? Uh, you know, let's pick Rajasthan as an example as the project location. But given all the things you mentioned about the increase in the structure, structure costs, etc., uh, what is the advantage of bifacial models in LCOA? Generally, we get, uh, I mean, uh, around 5 to five to 7% uh, gain, generation gain, when you use mono versus, mono versus bifacial. So that again, manufacturer doesn't guarantee. So that is also another challenge. But uh, all the experiences uh, of uh, different, I mean, developers and so on, it is generally in the range of 5 to 7, 5 to, then again, it depends on albedo also. So these two things are there. So. So both that if allotic factor is better, then you can, you may get more also. So the reflective uh, soil is is a, is a key to improve the performance of bifacial models. Okay, uh, I'll just take one more question in the interest of time. Uh, there is this this is the question of, again about bifacial modules. Uh, this is about glass glass modules versus. Uh, using a transparent back sheet uh, on the back side of the model. Which one uh, is likely to do well? Which which of these two configurations is likely to become more popular? Uh, or is already, if you have any results from the ground, uh, Chris or Vijay, in your experience? Uh, to Longji, I think I talked about this uh, so many times that we think there is still concerns on the reliability of uh, transparent back sheets so far. So we don't have the plan to uh, use it. Okay. Vijay, do you have any view on that? Yeah, I don't have data points. I don't have data points. We are also uh, experimenting this, you know, manufacturing the transparent back sheet as well. Okay. Okay, uh, well, thank you so much, uh, both Chris and Vijay. That was extremely insightful and useful, I hope, for all our listeners. Uh, I will pass over to my colleague, Sangeeta, for a formal closure. Sangeeta, over to you. Sure, thank you, Vinay. Uh, thanks, Chris, and thank you, Vijay. That was very insightful, interesting, and uh, also very candid. So I'm sure all our uh, viewers benefited uh, from uh, your views. Um, I'd like to thank especially our sponsors, Longi. Uh, thank you for helping us bring quality content to our viewers as well as our su subscribers. And finally, uh, thanks a lot to our audience. We had a good audience today, uh, more than 250 participants, and uh, we'd be sharing the recording of this today's session to you 
on your registered email account and it will also be hosted on our website. Um, our next event is a webinar. It's on uh, project operations and asset management. Uh, it will be held on the last week of July. So until then, it's goodbye from all of us at Bridge to India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.